it's a name by which God chooses to be known. God himself. God himself said, this is the way I want you to know me. God is forgiveness. When Moses asked for revelation of his name and his glory, and this is the revelation he gave him in Exodus 34, 6 and 7. The Lord God, this is God speaking. God describing his nature. Merciful and gracious, long-suffering, abundant in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity, forgiving transgressions, forgiving sin. He said, Moses, you want to know my name? This is my name. This is how I describe myself. And here's how I want you to know and understand me. I'm merciful, but I am a forgiving God. That is my nature. Call me the God of pardons, the God of forgiveness of all iniquity, all transgression, all sin. Jesus Christ went to the cross and the first drop of blood, the very first drop of blood and that fountain that was opened at the cross of Jesus out of Calvary came the cleansing, sanctifying blood of Jesus Christ. And we have people today appropriating forgiveness of sin who have no desire, have no inner striving of in the Holy Spirit about sin. They do not intend to give up their sins, but they have tried to appropriate the forgiveness of Almighty God without allowing the Holy Ghost to complete His work of conviction. When you really understand and discover the true forgiveness of God and where there is true forgiveness, you're always going to find a love for Jesus growing and you're going to find an obedient people. They're going to obey God. And you'll find a great devotion, a great love for Jesus, an ever-increasing love for Christ. If you don't have that, you don't understand forgiveness. Now let's move on to the unfolding of this name, the God who forgives. Now, his name was revealed in the Old Testament through animal sacrifices. But there was one sacrifice, the most solemn of all these sacrifices, the sin sacrifice, the sin offering in the Old Testament. Go to this solemn assembly. Two goats were led to the door where the high priest waited. One of those goats was sacrificed on the altar. But the other goat was the scapegoat. Many of you have heard about the scapegoat. And, and this was instituted by God. This is God explaining who he is. The high priest lays his hand on one of the goats. And Aaron shall lay both his hands upon the head of the live goat, confess over him all the iniquities of the children of Israel, and all their transgressions and all their sins, putting them upon the head of the goat, and shall send him away by the hand of a fit man into the wilderness. And it gets to the outside of the camp and then over the hill, and it's just about over the hill. And it's about to disappear. The Bible said it, it's going to be taken into a land not inhabited. And that means a deep valley where there's no escape. So the goat can never come back and haunt them. And that's what the Lord said. He cast them in a sea, never to be remembered again. And as that goat goes over the hill, there would be a shout go up. There go our sins. There go our sins. Folks, Jesus was both the lamb and he was the scapegoat. Both represent Jesus. His sacrifice and the taking of sin. Folks, God forgets them when he forgives them. Why are you holding on to them? Why do you remember them? Lay them down. God's call to repentance itself is proof that it's forgiveness in his name. In other words, the prescription of repentance is a revelation of forgiveness. She said, if you repent, I'll forgive. And then you repent. The very act of repentance infers or insists upon forgiveness. That's the proof. No repentance is accepted by God if it's not accompanied by faith in His forgiveness. Many have been convicted of their sins. They've been troubled by their sins. They're sorry for committing them. They weep and they cry and they acknowledge them. They even ask for deliverance. They make confession and even restitution, but never come into forgiveness. Consider Judas. Look at it. The Bible says of him, he repented himself. Next he cried, Oh, I have sinned. He acknowledged that he sinned. He named his sin. He said, I have betrayed one innocent man. I am guilty of innocent blood. I am guilty of sinned. I repent. 
He made restitution. He brought again the 30 pieces of silver, the scripture says. So why didn't he find repentance? He didn't find repentance because he believed his sin was too grievous to be forgiven. He couldn't believe that God was his forgiveness. He couldn't believe it. He couldn't accept it. You see, the Bible says Judas went out and hung himself. Because he's saying, I have betrayed innocent blood. How could God forgive a man who's betrayed him? I've betrayed the son of the living God. It's too ugly. It's too hopeless. And we have multitudes in the world today who have gone out and hung themselves on a tree of hopelessness. They've hung themselves. They're still living, but they've hung themselves. As far as, forgi as, far as forgiveness is concerned, they believe there's no hope for them. I don't believe that God will give up on anybody. I don't believe. He said he's not willing that any should perish, that none should perish. None. I'm saying your condition is not hopeless. There's some of you sitting here now saying, Pastor Dave, if you only knew what I've been through, if you only knew the things I do in secret, if you only knew what I, I, how filthy my heart is, if you only knew what a blasphemous person I've been, it is not hopeless. There is forgiveness and there's power of the Holy Ghost to deliver you just as it's written in this New Testament of ours. God's given me new hope. I'm saying right now, don't go out and give up. That's what the devil wants you to do, saying there's no forgiveness for you. There is forgiveness, and there's healing, and there's power in the blood of Jesus Christ to deliver you.